Popular newspaper headlines suggest the terrorists have achieved their aim in dividing our society. However, in our university community, we know this is not the case. Some of your fellow students are called Chris or Tariq, Luke or Asma, Mary, Foduma, Shinmiao, Mohammed or Matthew. The question is, how do Matthew and Mohammed get along? And the answer, of course, is that Mo and Matt get along really well. Indeed, all of you have been working together in peace, and the biggest stress has been to understand the subject you are studying and to pass your exams. Having students from different backgrounds adds to our understanding of the world today. Islam is an in integral part of Leicester society. And one of the reasons for this is the leadership of Imam Maulana Raza, who is known wherever he goes as the Imam from Leicester. Maulana Raza was born in Fatapur, a small village in, East, in the eastern province of Bihar in India. After graduating in chemistry at Agra University, he studied at the Jamia Naimia Moradabad Seminary graduating a second time in religious studies in 1976. The path that Maulana Raza took to becoming a religious leader was influenced first by his father, then by his leading Islamic teachers. In 1978, Maulana Raza was invited to lead the Islamic Center in Sutherland Street, Leicester. Being an imam is a very demanding job. There are many responsibilities leading five daily prayers, teaching children, supervising part-time tutors, pastoral care of the community, and visiting the sick and bereaved. There are also a host of demands outside the mosque, such as interfaith meetings, liaising with police, social workers, voluntary organizations, schools and colleges. But one of the challenges of being an imam is to maintain a working relationship with the mosque committee. This is a committee of mosque members who take decisions, the most important of which is the choice of spiritual leader or imam of the community. Now, we all know the difficulty in getting the approval of a committee on a long-term basis. However, Imam Raza is a master diplomat who has maintained the balance of being a spiritual guide and an employee of the Leicester Central Mosque for 30 years. During his first few years in Leicester, Imam Raza received guidance from Alami Azmi and Sir Zaki Badawi, who recognized his special talents. And in 1990, he became lecturer in Islamic personal law at Muslim College, where Imams are trained. He is presently executive secretary and registrar of the Muslim Law Sharia Council of the UK. Thousands of Muslims have been helped by this organization, particularly women in matrimonial disputes. Imam Raza is vice chairman of the Interfaith Network UK, founder trustee of the British Muslim Forum, president of the World Islamic Mission, and has recently been appointed chairman of the Mosques and Imams National Advisory Board for a second time. Imam Raza has a reputation for being the voice of Islam on the national and international scene. And in 2008, he was, he was awarded the OBE for his years of tireless work on interfaith dialogue for leadership of Muslims in Britain and services to British society. A lack of understanding and respect for Islam leads on the one side to Islamophobia and on the other side to radicalization. Our common civilization is based on many of the innovations of the Islamic world. Every time we write numbers, we are using an Arabic numbering system. Ancient Islamic alchemists gave us many discoveries in chemistry. The first steps in understanding the physics of light were taken by Islamic thinkers. Indeed, Isaac Newton used these findings as the basis of his studies on optics. Separation and conflict in our society is not logical. It can only be prevented by knowledge and understanding leading to mutual respect. 
Imam Raza has worked on improving communication within the Islamic community so that the conflict between Sunni and Shia traditions is not transferred to the UK. Imam Raza is often an important spokesman for British Muslims in national discussions on improving community relations. Imam Raza is a man of Leicester. So am I. And in my discussions with him, it soon became apparent that we were concerned about the same issues affecting our city. What kind of uniquely British Muslim identity can the younger generation form against a background of conflict in the Middle East and an uncertain international response to it? As teachers, we all understand that it is our job to pose the questions and for you, the students, to provide the answers relevant to your situation. Under the guidance of Imam Raza on the local and national stage, it is clear that the religion of Islam is a peaceful part of our society. This has been his life's work and his greatest achievement. Mr. Chancellor, by the authority of the Senate and Council, I present Imam Maulana Mohammed Shahid Raza that you may confer upon him the degree of Doctor of Laws. Raza. It's my privilege to present this to you. And I can't think of a more worthy recipient. I will be proud. Well done, indeed. Thank Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. I begin in the name of God, the most merciful, the most kind. Chancellor, the Right Honorable Lord Grocott, Vice Chancellor, Professor Paul Boyle members of the faculty and my dear fellow graduates. I would like to begin by thanking the University of Leicester for this great honor. It's a great privilege not only for me and my family but also the Leicester Central Mosque and the wider Muslim community of Leicester to whom I dedicate this achievement. I have been serving the community of Leicester for over 35 years. In this time, I have come to know this city as one of tolerance and multi-faith harmony. During this long association, the city has greatly shaped and influenced my thinking on the values of interfaith, multiculturalism, cohesion, and diversity. The irony of receiving a degree at the age of 65 is not lost on me. I was considering retirement last month. I sincerely hope that this serves as a reminder to all of us the dividends of a long-lasting and consistent contribution to a cause. My dear fellow graduates, wherever you go and whatever you do, 
always consider your contribution to the society and community around you and strive to make it a consistent one. I would like to present myself to you today as a Muslim who feels firmly connected and integrated with the modern Western values. There are some who share my faith, who feel that this is not possible. Islam teaches us to not only adapt and integrate with the society around us, but also ensure we are full participants and contributors towards a healthy, happy, cohesive, safe, and secure society. I would like to end by sharing a saying of my late mentor, Sarzaki Badavi, who was a remarkable scholar. He used to say, Muslims in this country must live here with a passion and emotional association with Great Britain. Thank you very much.